Hello and welcome to a look at Nemesis the Warlock for the Commodore 64, the game that was released by Martech. Nemesis has been tasked, decided to, whatever the case might be, to get rid of Torquemada and put an end to his evil regime. And in order to do so, he has to navigate several different screens disposing of bad guys and uh, finding the exit of set screens. Nemesis, who is the grand, uh, Grandmaster of the Termites, don't question it, comes equipped with his sword Excessus, which sounds rather excessive, but also a gun. Unfortunately, Nemesis wasn't smart enough to bring his own ammunition, so he is reliant very heavily on finding the ammunition for his gun on the different screens. Looking at the interface, at the bottom left you have his health, which is the heart being held by the hand and slowly squeezed, and you can possibly imagine what happens if uh, the heart is fully squeezed. Not very good for Nemesis. Underneath that, that is a number, which I will get back to in a moment. So right after that, the green helmet icon thing, it signifies a charge that Nemesis has one off per screen, where he can fire off a little fiery blob of lava that will destroy any enemies on the same gameplay level as he is on. With a my life exception. To the right of that is the image of his gun and on the knees that is available shots. The gun can only contain 12 shots at any given time, so if you fire off one shot and pick up another cartridge, these bullet-like things you can see on the screen at all, you will be reset to 12 shots. It will, it will not stack, so it's something that uh, any player will have to be very, very mindful of. Furthest to the right is an image of Torquemada slowly fading in, and that is basically your timer because you can possibly imagine that if it fades fully in, a bad thing is going to happen. Well, let's get back to that number underneath the heart. That number signifies the amount of enemies that Nemesis has to dispose of per screen in order to progress. But it's not that simple because once he has killed the amount of enemies he's needed to he needs to find the exit what you know is that the exit can be at the bottom the top left side or the right side but only by trial and error will you actually be able to locate the exit that sounds easy enough but uh, bear in mind that as soon as the correct amount of enemies has been disposed of. The heart, uh, the hand squeezing the heart will start doing that at an alarming rate, whether you are in contact with enemies or not, meaning that you have a very, very strict timer for finding the set exit. But let's return to that after we talked about the technical aspects of this game. From a graphical point of view, I think there's a little question that this is one of the better looking Commodore 64 games, especially from that uh, era, age, whatever you call it. The main character, Nemesis, looks like a beefy tough guy that you don't necessarily want to uh, be on the bad side of, and the enemies, called Terminators, I think the helmets make them look a bit cutesy, but it's, it's so nice looking. Belonging to the graphics, of course, is that the semi uh, physics that is involved with the corpses once you uh, turn the terminators into corpses. It's not just a graphical gimmick, it actually has gameplay implications because the cartridges, the bullets you can see, if the corpse of a terminator lands on top of said cartridge, even though you know the cartridge, cartridge is supposed to be there, it is you can't pick it up, so you have effectively um, 
force those bullets to be unavailable. So you have to be somewhat mindful of how you uh, dispose of the bad guys so they don't land where your bullets are. But more importantly, on certain screens, in order to actually find the exit, you'll have to basically stack corpses into a staircase. And uh, being on a timer, that means that you have to be very, very careful about planning um, how and when and from what direction you shoot the bad guys. The sound design is great, the gun sound, the swoosh sound of the sword, and everything else sounds very, very uh, well made, and the sound quality in general is very, very high. The title music is one of, if not the best, Rob Hubbard, uh, Commodore 64 game sound ever. Um, it is definitely one I rank very, very highly. But the gameplay, which of course is of utmost importance, what makes it cool, in my opinion, is also what makes it frustrating. The fact that you have the enemies flying all, all over the place when you shoot them looks rather cool. The fact that you have to sometimes stack them into staircases and avoid taking damage and conserve your ammunition and all that kind of stuff at the same time starts becoming a pain at later screens. Now, the fact that you don't know exactly where an exit is unless you have found it by trial and error means that once you start completing screens later down the line and you come to a screen you have never seen before, you start looking for the exit once you've killed the bad guys, but then because of the natural squeezing of your heart, you will find that you die very quickly and have to work your way back to that screen before you get another shot at exiting correctly. It is probably done to uh, give the game some longevity, but it can also discourage you from continuing to play the game once you realize you have to play through six tough screens in order to get to that one screen you are struggling with not knowing whether you will find the exit the next time you get to it either. Nemesis the Warlock for the Commodore 64 is a great game, but it can be extremely frustrating. On that note, thanks for watching, take care, see you next time. Bye bye for now.